So first thing you got to know, we're North Dakota State University. We're a four-year public Division I university located in Fargo, North Dakota. A little bit about the school. There are just over 13,000 students on campus, so we're considered a mid-sized university. And we have over 100 academic majors that we offer. And those are always going to be two important questions that you ask when you're looking at colleges. First, just what's the campus size like? And second, does this college have my major? Um, and then another important question, though, to be asking is, you know, what do you want your college experience to be like? And that's kind of what those statistics on the right side of the page indicate. So overall, we have a 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And 67% of our classes have 40 students or fewer. Again, that doesn't mean, you know, every class you're in is going to have 16 students. But on the whole, the takeaway is that at, ND, at NDSU, classes are small enough where you're going to get meaningful interaction with your professors and with other students in the class. A little bit about cost here. So as you can see on the chart, Depending on what state you're coming from, your tuition and fees will vary. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that these are current year costs and, well, maybe two things to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing is that they are total year costs. So any number you see on here is for the full academic year. Um, your tuition and fees column, though, that's basically what's covering your in-classroom cost. So that's what's meant by tuition. And then, of course, your student fees cover access to all the different student resources that we'll be talking about during our Q&A panel today. Room and board, that is gonna be the same for every student, um, really just depending on what kind of meal plan you get. So room then would be what you're paying to live on campus, and then the board part of it, of course, is your five or seven day meal plan. And then your last column you see would be your total cost, um, one thing to mention is that all of these rates are going to be covered by, or they include base tuition. So there are a handful of programs that have a differential tuition rate, um, just because students in those programs have access to some different resources than other students on campus. And those five programs are um, engineering, business, nursing, architecture, and I always forget one of them. Pharmacy is the last one. So that's cost. Of course, the next logical question is, how do we pay for it? And scholarships at NDSU really come in two different forms. We have the guaranteed awards, and those are just based entirely off of your ACT or SAT score, and then your unweighted cumulative high school GPA. So you can see in that chart, maybe you find where you land in there, and then you can see the freshman award. Um, again, is guaranteed as long as you're admitted to NDSU. Um, but maybe you know, you're sitting at a place where your test didn't go as well as you had hoped, or maybe your freshman year of high school was a little rough and you're still building that GPA up. There are a lot of additional scholarship opportunities available to you. And it talks a little bit about that on your screen here under the additional named scholarships section. Um, and for those, you basically, you just take 10 to 15 minutes, submit a general scholarship application. And then by submitting that, it applies you to all of the matching scholarship opportunities. And from there, our scholarship committee will take a look and award you with anything that's a match. Both of those scholarship opportunities have a February 1st deadline as well. So always good to keep in mind. But again, as we'll probably mention throughout this presentation, um, the earlier the better. It'll help you out down the line. As far as the admission process in general goes, the first step is always just to submit an application for admission. If you are a junior right now heading into your senior year, um, there is no application fee for students applying for fall of 2021. So that's an awesome perk. Um, the second part of the admission process then is just that we'll ask to see your high school and college transcripts. Depending on where you're coming at, 
uh, coming in out with your high school GPA and your ACT or SAT score, we may not even need to see your transcripts until you graduate from high school. Um, and just to give you an idea of what those admission guidelines are, we look for a 2.75 GPA and then a 22 on the ACT or an 1100 on the SAT. And then we just want to make sure you're taking all of your core high school classes. So if you check all those boxes, you apply, um, then you can be admitted again without even sending transcripts. And then, like I mentioned, again, the third part of the admission process is your ACT or SAT score. Of course, there's a lot of uncertainty right now um, with just tests being administered. So as of today, though, um, that's still a part of NDSU's admission process. So then the final thing we will talk about is really just kind of a next steps list for you. Uh, like I just touched upon, taking the ACT or SAT right now is a little up in the air, but um, you know, just keep monitoring that situation um, and stay tuned for updates from your high school. The next thing, of course, is just to plan your coursework, um, sit down with your high school counselor, or have a phone call or a Zoom call like this, and um, just make sure that you're planning ahead for you know, junior, senior year, um, and that you're able to take the classes that are gonna help you most in college. Um, then we'll just ask that you explore majors. Again, we have over 100 that you can look through, and chances are there's gonna be one that's a good fit for you. Um, and our website has information, more, more information about all of those majors, so you can always check that out. Utilize the net price calculator. This is kind of an underrated tip here, but if you're looking to get a preliminary idea of what college is going to cost you, um, a lot of ND or a lot of NDSUs, a lot of universities have net price calculators that you can use uh, just to give you an idea of where you're coming in with um, just potentially what you'll be paying at NDSU and then what your financial aid package could look like. Next, scheduling that virtual admission counselor or academic meeting. Again, this is kind of going to be, you know, a very, I'd say, broader overview, but you will get some awesome student perspectives today. But if you're looking to dig in a little bit more with uh, majors or scholarships, cost, any of that, then I would definitely say set up an admission counselor appointment. And if you want to learn more about your major from a professor or a program advisor, then we also have the option of setting up those appointments, again, with the academic side of things. And then finally, just apply for admission. Again, if you are heading into your senior year of high school, our application for admission will open, say, sometime, I think in mid-August right now is what we're thinking. So again, stay tuned for that, and we'll work our way from there. That is all we have to say about NDSU for now, anyway. Um, of course, there's a lot more to say. But I think to start here, uh, I'd like all of our panelists to introduce themselves. So, um, Sinkees, can we start with you? And then we'll move on to all the students. Sure. Thanks, Andrew. Hi, everyone. My name is Sinkees Lynan. I work with Andrew in the Office of Admission and have worked here for six years and serve as our Associate Director. Michelle, do you want to go next? Hi, so I'm Michelle and I'm a senior here at NDSU. I'm studying mechanical engineering and so I'll graduate in a couple days from now. Um, I'm from Maple Grove, Minnesota, which is near the Twin Cities, if you're not sure where that is. And yeah, I think that's everything, right? <laughs> Sounds pretty good to me, yeah. Caitlin, you want to go next? Hello, I'm Caitlin. I'm a sophomore studying management communication from Boston, Minnesota. Um, a fun fact about me is that I'm the 16th member of my family to attend NDSU. That is a fun fact. I did not know that. <laughs> um, Austin, you want to go next? Yeah, my name is Austin Carisu. I'm a freshman studying, studying journalism, and I'm from Grays Lake, Illinois. So about nine and a half hours away from NDSU. 
Thank you. Sophie, you want to wrap us up here? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Sophie. Um, I'm a second year architecture student. Um, I'm also studying history as my minor. And I'm from Minnetonka, Minnesota, which is about 20 minutes west of the cities. All right. Thanks, everyone. So we're just going to jump right to it. We'll get to questions. Um, Sankees, starting with you, can you talk a little bit about admission deadlines in general? Um, and then maybe related to that, you know, when should students apply to NDSU? Absolutely. Andrew, I know you covered a little bit, little bit of this in the introduction, um, but certainly you can ultimately apply to NDSU at any point during your senior year. So if you're, if you're a junior right now about to be a senior, as Andrew indicated, our application will become available about mid-August. Um, we'll definitely let you know um, as soon as we have a, a solidified date there. But once our application opens, you can certainly apply from this August all the way to August of 2021, if you're starting in the fall of 2021. We're a rolling admission institution, meaning that as students apply, we'll make decisions and let you know um, of your admission to NDSU. However, we certainly do not recommend you delay applying. There are certainly perks to applying early um, to the institution. So as soon as our application opens, if you know you're at least wanting to continue to consider NDSU, I would encourage you to apply early um, because in order for you to do things like applying for scholarship, apply for housing, receive your financial aid award notice, you have to be admitted um, to receive that type of information. So in a nutshell, um, you can apply anywhere from August of this year to August of next year, but we certainly encourage you to apply early so that you're not missing out on any later deadlines like I mentioned um, a few moments ago. As far as financial aid and scholarships, every institution is going to have different deadlines. So it's really important that you're narrowing down your college list and you're really keeping an eye on what their deadlines are because they may vary and be all across the board. Um, some of our earlier deadlines would be that February 1st scholarship deadline that Andrew mentioned. And so you want to make sure that if you want to apply for scholarships that you're admitted by that day so you don't miss out on that opportunity. Um, we also have a priority deadline for financial aid of February 1st. So if you want to be one of the first students to receive your financial aid award, you want to make sure you're submitting your FAFSA as soon as it becomes available, which is usually around October of your senior year. So if I could recap some of the key deadlines. It would be August for applying, it would be October for financial aid, and it would be February 1st for scholarships. And in general, if I can just wrap up, um, Andrew talked a lot about NDSU scholarship opportunities, but keep in mind we will accept scholarships from any external entity as well. So if you wanted to apply for scholarships from your hometown, from your state, um, from other sources, they may all have different deadlines too, so just keep that in mind and of course plan early and do research early so that you're not missing out on any of those external opportunities as well. All right, thanks so much, Sankees. This next question, I think we're just gonna have everyone answer this one or all the students. So what made you decide that NDSU was the right fit for you? Michelle, do you wanna get started with this one? Yeah, so I'm actually a transfer student. So I went somewhere else for the first year and then I ended up transferring here. And I came to NDSU visiting a friend and I just thought that everyone was so like proud to be a bison when they were here. And I got to go tailgating at one of the football games and it was so much fun. And so I really liked the atmosphere on campus. And then I went and visited the engineering department and I absolutely loved it. So that was kind of the big like, official decider for me um, and just everyone here loves being a bison is proud to be a bison even the people that live in Fargo love the bison so just the school spirit is a really big one cool Caitlin so as I mentioned earlier, I'm the 16th member of my family to attend NDSU, um, but that is definitely not the only reason I chose NDSU. My sister goes to NDSU, and when she was a freshman, I actually stayed overnight with her in a residence hall, and I just fell in love with campus. The people here are truly some of the nicest that you'll ever meet, and I couldn't be happier with my decision. All right, thanks, Caitlin. Austin? 
Um, so when I first visited NDSU, uh, I wanted a mid-sized campus, which is um, NDSU. It's pretty mid-sized. I didn't want to go to a campus that was too big or too small. And also NDSU was far enough from where I live, about like nine hours. I didn't want to be too close to home, yet I didn't want to be so far away where I could never go home. But um, yeah, the, just the overall feel, like the general size of the campus made me want to pick here. And it was nice at home feeling too. So. Gotcha. Thanks, Austin. And Sophie. Yeah. Well, I think I chose NDSU. Um, my major architecture program here is awesome. So the academics really sold me. Um, I also just fell in love with Fargo when I visited, um, like going downtown and um, just being a Fargoan. It sold me. So. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, Caitlin, we'll jump to you next. I mean, coming from a family that's, you know, had a lot of NDSU roots, was there still anything that surprised you when you got onto campus? Absolutely. So, like I said, I did fall in love with campus when I stayed with my sister, but coming as a student was a whole nother experience. I actually didn't think that a college could actually be such a great community where I fit in so well. I just, I met my people at NDSU and I am so surprised that it was as easy as it was. Cause that was something I was definitely nervous about coming into college was making friends, but we do an absolutely fantastic job of helping you to make those friends at NDSU. All right, thanks Caitlin. Uh, Austin, do you want to talk about your major, how you picked a major, um, yeah, and just kind of go from there. Yeah, so I'm majoring in journalism, which is one of the majors in the communications department. So um, I actually was a civil engineering major when I came to NDSU, but then I switched about a week before classes started. And the advisors in the communications programs were super helpful. They got me all the classes that I was gonna need to take set up my schedule within a couple of hours. It was super simple and I was ready to take classes by next week without any problems um, to how um, I was gonna get my education done. As well as uh, I really like all the communications professors because they all work really well with their office hours and how you're able to um, meet with them individually if you have any questions about any assignments or anything along those lines. Cool. Did anyone else change their major at any time? I did. Caitlin? I yeah. my major twice my freshman year. Um, so I came in as an education major and um, I kind of changed my mind over the summer, but I was going to give it a shot. And I decided that after my first taking my first history class, that was my major, um, it wasn't for me. So I did switch to English education. And I took my first education class and I decided maybe that wasn't for me. So my English education advisor actually helped me um, figure out that communication was more where my interests were. I did also go to our career and advising center, which is a fantastic free resource for our students. And they helped me by talking about what my interests were, what I could see myself doing. I took an interest inventory test, which was super helpful. So some of those great resources on campus really helped me discover that um, communication is where my interests lie. All right, great. Uh, Sophie, can you talk a little bit about your classroom experience and maybe like any highlights or favorite memories that you have? Absolutely. Um, classroom experience. Um, I've had a lot of great um, interactions with my professors. I try to make it a point to like get to know my professors and the people in my classes and it's so much fun it's so rewarding I think one of my favorite um, classroom memories was from freshman year um, I was taking a physics class and I had to take a test and at first I was like outside of the normal class time I had to take a test and so I was a little nervous like how am I going to do this I have to go to my professor's office hours that's scary but I walked over to um, the building where his office is and I walked up he had a dog in his office during his office hours. He just brings it every day. So I got to hang out, take my test with a giant golden doodle. Um, and so, yeah, 
sort of outside of class, but professors are awesome. Um, now I'm not afraid of them. So, yeah. All right, that's a great story. Um, is that, that must be Dr. Wagner, right? In the- Sure is, yes. Yeah, awesome. All right, Sankey, so we're gonna jump back to you again. So let's say there's a student watching who has some college credit coming in, uh, whether that's AP or PSEO, anything like that. Uh, how will those credits transfer to NDSU? This might be the question of the century, I think. We get this question often, so I'm glad, Andrew, that you've asked. In short, if I could summarize, all of your credits will transfer to NDSU. I guess the bigger question is, how are they going to transfer? And that's where we can better assist you. Um, so if you're nervous, if your classes are going to come in, they certainly will. We just need to figure out the how and what that looks like, depending upon your major and depending upon what you're transferring in and how you're transferring it in. So some courses could transfer in as exact matches. So you could take a biology class or take an AP um, exam and that could transfer in exactly as biology. Um, and others may transfer in as elective credit. And that can happen when we may not have the equivalent course to what you've already taken or what exam you've already taken. So you're still getting credit for those elective courses. Um, it's just not meeting an exact match to what you may have taken at the time. It's really important to plan ahead and ensure the courses that you want to transfer in are going to fulfill certain requirements like I mentioned before. So if you're an engineering major, there may be certain requirements that you have that are very different than someone who's an education major. So um, just being mindful of what your career interests are and how that aligns with some of the majors that we offer and then how that relates to some of the classes you plan to take prior to attending the NDSU. So it takes a little bit of proactive planning, but like I said, that's where we can help you as well. Um, down the road, if you decide to apply to NDSU and to attend, we'll be asking you to submit your official transcripts and any official exam scores that you have. So we'll ask to see that information at some point so that we can add that um, to your official student record, but we're certainly able to help you with those questions even before you decide to apply or before you decide to commit to coming to NDSU. So to summarize, there's a few different ways that you can either research on your own um, or utilize additional resources on our campus. On our website, we have what we call credit by exam website where it provides charts of AP classes, CLEP classes, um, any other types of exams you can take for college credit and it'll tell you exactly how those exam scores will transfer into NDSU. So for example, a common AP class students take is Calculus AB. If you took Calculus AB, um, in high school, you complete the AP exam and you transfer that in and you score three or higher on that exam, you'll automatically get credit for what we call Calculus 1 at NDSU or Math 165. So we have several different AP courses on that chart online so you can see exactly how those credits will transfer in. We also have what we call a transfer course, course equivalencies website. So it's kind of like a search tool online where you can plug in the college, for example, that you're taking credits from, and then you can search for specific classes. So maybe you took public speaking at Dakota College at Botno one, one year. You can see exactly how public speaking transfers into NDSU. You can create your own um, modified list of courses. So you have a kind of a plan to align that with your major and start checking off classes that you've already taken at other colleges. So you can utilize that transfer course equivalencies tool online um, as well, or you can contact people like me or Andrew or any of our admission staff, and we will certainly create a plan for you, connect you with advisors on campus, um, or further answer any questions that you have, whether you've already taken courses or you're thinking about which courses to take and transfer in later. All right, thanks so much, Zinkies. Uh, Michelle. What, um, not what, yeah, uh, what extracurricular activities are you involved with? Uh, maybe some different student orgs and how do you have time to do it all? Yeah, so I've been pretty heavily involved in the Society of Women Engineers. I was the president this past year. And it's kind of nice because like SWE, um, a bunch of organizations on campus have ways you can get involved that kind of work with your schedule so like you can choose how heavily you want to get involved 
whether it's doing like multiple things a week or just like once a month or something, there's a bunch of different ways. I am also a tour guide on campus and I work at the tutoring center as a peer mentor. So I've kind of talked and worked with some of my bosses to figure out schedules that like fit around my class schedule. So it's nice because you can fit in things as much as you need to or as little as you need to. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Uh, Caitlin, can you talk a little bit about how intramural sports or club sports work at NDSU? Yeah, so I've actually never done an intramural or club sport, but I do have friends that created an intramural basketball team my freshman year, and they had an absolute blast. So with intramurals, you can sign up as a team. So if you know like um, five other people who you all want to be on a basketball team with, you can make your own team. And then you'll play other teams from NDSU, and you'll get to have a good time there. I know they have a big intramural championship, and I believe that's held in our shack, which is where our Bison uh, basketball team plays, so that's super cool. Um, as for club sports, I do believe that club sports um, compete against other um, colleges, so not in DSU. Um, definitely a great way to meet other people and get involved. Like I said, I've never done an intramural, but I do know that we have a ton of different options. I know we have like basketball, volleyball. We even have something called canoe battleship, where we put some students in some canoes in the pool, and then they try to sink each other. Uh, so there's definitely a big variety of fun activities. Okay, thanks, Caitlin. Um, Austin, can you talk a little bit about just your experience living on campus and then maybe also just about like living on campus that first year and whether, you know, you have to live on NDSU's campus your, during your whole college career or is it just that first year? Um, yeah, just anything kind of in that general area. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm a freshman. I actually just recently lived on campus and I had a really great time. It was super fun. So when you come to campus as a freshman, you're required to live in one of the dorms, at least for your first year, unless you wi live within, I think it's a 30 mile range of Fargo, of NDSU. You don't have to, but um, when you do move into the dorms, it's super fun because you're pretty much having a sleepover with your friends every day. You uh, meet all these new people um, on your floor, within your dorm, even your roommates. You, if you go to um, uh, get a random roommate, you could be making a best friend that you live with. And um, another thing with living on campus your first year is um, you get a meal plan. Um, so the dining centers are unlimited food and um, they're really great food actually, it's pretty good. Um, a lot of the dining centers are connected to a majority of the dorms on campus, which is also very nice. So like when it's cold out, you don't even have to go outside to get some food. Um, but overall, living on campus your first year, you'll really enjoy it. It's super fun. It's a great way to meet new people that um, you'll be living with. Thanks, Austin. Uh, Sophie, my next question was going to be about the food on campus, but Maybe you could talk about like the food scene in Fargo as a whole. Sure. Um, um, yes. So dining center food, you really can't top it many places. I love the dining center food. Um, we have like three um, dining centers. Um, one of them's open pretty late till like 11 p.m. But if you're ever looking to um, switch it up, get some more variety, there's also the food court. Um, in the Union, which has a lot of um, great restaurants. Yes, it does have the most food capita per, for the United States, that's pretty cool. But downtown, some of my favorites, um, they have pho right across from Renaissance Hall, which is the architecture building. It's like a Vietnamese um, soup kind of place, spicy pie, um, I love it. It's like the best pizza place in town. Coffee shops, there's a bunch of cute little coffee shops downtown. Um, which I go to way too often, um, and um, Insomnia Cookies, that's also by Spicy Pie, that's a favorite of mine, I love cookies, so, yeah. All right, thanks, Sophie, kind of put you on the spot there, so I appreciate the adaptability. Um, 
One thing I was going to add to Austin, who did a great job about talking about uh, living on campus, is simply just how the roommate matching process works. So there's really a few different things to say. First, if you are coming into NDSU and you have a roommate in mind, um, then you can match with each other. You can make that request and residence life uh, usually has a pretty good time of accommodating those requests. Um, so that would be one thing. If you want, you can just, I always say, just do nothing and you'll get a random roommate. And that's, you know, kind of one of the easier ways to go. Um, but the one thing that I do want to talk about, especially, is called My College Roomie. And so once you apply for housing, you'll get an email from us and we'll say, hey, log into your My College Roomie account. And you'll basically take like a questionnaire. And based on how you answer those questions, you'll be matched with other incoming students and you can get compatibility scores. So in a way, it's almost like a dating app, but you're looking for the roommate who's gonna be the best match for you. Um, so those are really, you know, I think that's kind of a point of anxiety for a lot of students coming in is, oh, am I going to like my roommate? You know, do I have an option? Is it all just random? So there definitely are, you know, a lot of different ways you can go there. So in case we're going to move to you again. And I'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit about some of the specific student resources we have on campus, um, you know, for let's say our LGBTQ plus students, our students coming from a multicultural background, military students, disability services. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk, touch on any of those student services? Certainly, and you know, these are the ones you just, just listed, Andrew, are probably just a small sliver of the services we offer. I think we could spend this whole panel talking about all the different um, supports in place for you as students, but. I will touch on some of the examples you just gave, Andrew. Um, we do have a video online. If you go to ndsu.edu slash discover, you'll find um, several videos, but two of them highlight our student resources and ways to get involved on campus. So if you wanted to learn more about um, these resources or any of the other questions we've been answering in this panel, you can certainly check out that website after this um, panel is over. But in general, it's really, really important to us that we create an environment where all students feel welcome and supported. And so we try really hard to ensure that we're offering you the right supports um, so that you have this, the access and um, resources to people, tools that you need. So in short, I'm going to try to summarize these as best as I can without going off on a tangent here. For example, if you're a veteran, active duty member, reservist, or maybe a member of the National Guard, you can get involved with um, a student group on campus called Bison Student Veterans. Um, it's a group that really connects allies and veterans or active military members together to ensure that you guys have ways to connect with each other and um, get to know each other more. We also have staff available on campus to help you navigate or manage your military benefits. So if you're looking to use any benefits like a GI Bill, for example, to pay for school, we have a certified official on campus to assist you with that process year over year. Um, whether you have a non-apparent or a parent disability, we have disability services staff who will, who really are here to help you reduce barriers to access and success. So um, they offer several different accommodations, both academic and residential accommodations for you. So for example, if you're needing extra test time, um, note-taking support, adapted study areas, maybe modified living arrangements, or maybe you're a parent yourself or expecting a child, um, our disability services staff can help you um, receive the accommodations you need so that you can be successful while you're at NDSU. If you identify as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, you'll have many, many options to get involved in a number of student organizations. I think there's maybe seven or eight different ones. Um, for examples would be like Pride Alliance or Project Bison to name a few. Um, so you can get involved in those student groups throughout the year. We also have a resource room in the Memorial Union. So if you wanted to connect with students in a centralized place on campus, you can go to the resource room. Um, it includes computer stations and lounge areas. So whether you need to study, relax, or socialize, um, it's kind of like an all-inclusive um, space for you to hang out. 
Um, the last one I want to touch on quickly is our Office of Multicultural Programs. So if this office, I guess, is comprised of staff and graduate students that serve students from traditionally underrepresented groups in the U.S. So maybe you identify as an ethnic minority, for example, um, like Asian, African American, um, et cetera, you can utilize the programming and the events put on by the Office of Multicultural Programs. They also provide additional academic support to you as well, um, beyond what you'll get from your department or from your advisor. And then there's several multicultural student groups on campus. So I think we have like, I think six or seven of them, but um, to name a couple, we have Native American Student Association, Somali Student Association, um, I think the Hispanic Organization for Latin Americans, and then um, other ones like Black Student Association, there's a few others as well. So those are kind of a summary of some of the different supports we have in place for you, um, different offices, different students, different staff who are here to ensure that you have a good experience while you're here. And as I said before, there is a video that highlights these resources and others at ndsu.edu slash discover. All right, thanks so much, Sinkees. Um, so staying on that topic of just different resources for our NDSU students, Caitlin, I believe you talked a little bit about working with the Career and Advising Center earlier, is that right? Um, could you maybe even just like reiterate the, how that worked and maybe some different things that the Career and Advising Center can help you with? Absolutely. So the Career and Advising Center is a fantastic resource that is free for students to use. Um, they can give you help with writing resumes, cover letters, finding a job, finding an internship, practicing for interviews. Um, for example, if you know you're going to be interviewed by a panel of five people, they will find five people to help you prepare for that interview, which is awesome. They also have a career closet where you can check out business professional clothing for free, which is amazing. And they can also help you with doing some of that academic career exploration. So like I said, I was kind of undecided, kind of feeling lost, not sure what I wanted to do. So I did go to that career center and I took an interest inventory test and had a career coach walk me through my results, talk to me about my interests, what majors would correlate well with those. And that's that advising center as well. They'll talk to you about um, how to explore those majors, get you connected with people from the departments, kind of get you um, onto that academic track that you're looking at. So absolutely a fantastic resource for our students. And one of the really great things about that resource is, is that it doesn't end right after you graduate. The Career Center can continue to help you for like five years after you graduate. So if like two years after you graduate, you're really not feeling the job you have, you can still go back to that Career Advising Center and they can help you out. So definitely something worth checking out. All right, thanks so much, Caitlin. Uh, Michelle, can you talk a little bit about just what Fargo Moorhead is like and, you know, if there's anything to do on the weekends in town? Yeah, so um, Fargo Moorhead area is actually a lot bigger than I thought. I believe it's about 200,000 people that live in the area. West Fargo is its own town now, which I didn't even know was a thing. But it's nice because, like, we have, it's all connected, so there's a bunch of stuff going on in all three cities. Um, they have the big West Acres Mall, which is great to go if you want to avoid studying for a little bit, go shopping. Um, they have downtown Fargo and downtown Moorhead, so if you want to go get a bite to eat or go to a cute little boutique, they have those going on. Um, the Fargo Dome, which is right up at the north end of campus, is where we have our football, bleh, all of our football games and stuff. But they also host a lot of cool things like Rib Fest in the summertime, where they have some of the best like uh, rib food trucks come and it's great. They have country music playing. Um, they also do a bunch of other events at the Fargo Dome. And then there's always stuff going on on the weekends, like around Christmas time, they have a light parade. It's pretty cool. There's always something going on, always something you can take advantage of. Cool, thanks, Michelle. And I think we've mentioned downtown Fargo a couple times. Uh, I think it helps just to kind of situate Fargo, like the north side, the two highlights are basically NDSU and the downtown area of the city. So they're about a five minute bus or car ride away. Um, but speaking of transportation, 
Austin, is it necessary to have a car when you're living on campus or are there other ways to get around? Um, no, so when you first come to campus, you don't need a car at all. There's a lot of great ways to uh, get around. So like the easiest way to get around campus is probably walking because the campus is only three by five blocks. It's really short, and small and compact. So walking will take you maybe like seven minutes tops to get from one side of campus to the other as well as they have the bus system. So the bus system is free for NDSU students. It'll take you all throughout campus as well as downtown. So like to West Acres Mall or downtown Fargo as well in the fall, they have uh, the bike systems too. So the bikes are free to use for the first 30 minutes and then um, you can ride them wherever and you just gotta get them back in the bike stations before that 30 minutes is up. And it only costs like a dollar for like a half hour or something, but um, you can just keep like renting them out pretty much um, if you get there before the 30 minutes. Um, so those are a great way. It takes like 15 minutes to ride a bike from NDSU to downtown. Me and my, a couple of my friends did it in the fall when we first came to campus just to explore. It was super fun. It was super nice out. But um, yeah, you don't have to have a car your first year, so you don't need to worry about that unless you really want to bring one. Cool. Thanks, Austin. And I know we have a couple panelists from the Twin Cities area. Um, and just in general, we have a lot of students who come from the Twin Cities to NDSU. Uh, can either of you, did either of you not bring a car at first? Like, did you have to get back and forth between the cities at all without a car? Uh, I, oh, go ahead, Sophie. Oh, sure. Um, my first year, I did have a car. Um, and now this year, over the summer, I smashed it to pieces. But second year, I didn't have a car. Um, I realized how freeing it was not to have a car. I am like the biggest fan of our Fargo-Moorhead mat bus system. I ride it like four times a day um, during normal campus, getting me from um, my campus apartment to downtown to campus. Um, and there's always like a lot of people that like around major holidays that are driving back and forth. So my roommate happens to be from Minnetonka as well. So we go up carpool a lot. I've also taken the Greyhound a couple times. It's super nice. There's Wi-Fi. Um, so it's pretty easy to get back and forth and carpool and all of that. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Sophie. Did you have anything to add, Michelle? That, that take, <laughs> takes care of it. Cool. Um, Sophie, I'm just going to actually bounce right back to you. How easy is it to get a job on campus? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it's pretty easy. There's a lot of opportunities um, for working on campus. Um, I have two jobs on campus. Michelle also has two jobs on campus. I work here in the Office of Admission. I get to meet a bunch of um, prospective students, which is super fun. I also work um, at our Union Art Gallery, and those are just positions that um, they'll send out emails for and you can apply to. We also have some other really big employers, um, the Wellness Center, that's a really good one. Um, also dining services. I have a lot of friends who work like for the dining center or the coffee shops in the dining centers. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of opportunities. And I really love working on campus because you don't have to go anywhere else. Like, like you're on campus already, you just go into work. Um, they totally work with your schedule. Um, so yeah. Cool. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, Sankees, can you talk a little bit about the different tutoring programs that are available to the students? Andrew, you always give me the questions that I can just go talk for days and days about. Um, yes, I can provide a summary of some of the different tutoring supports we have on campus. So ones I want to highlight are Math Emporium, our ACE our ACE Center or our ACE Department, um, Trio Support Services, and then our Center for Writers. So if you need support or practice in classes such as college algebra, trigonometry, or pre-calculus, you can utilize our Math Emporium, which is located in the lower level of the library. It's basically a, a huge computer lab that have either self-instructed or um, professor-led tutorials on those introductory math courses. So not only can you do the lab-based tutoring, there are also our staff and faculty available um, throughout the week to assist you with those courses if you need additional support. 
Our ACE Center, also referred to as our Academic Collegiate Enhancement Center, um, is located in the basement of one of our dining centers. It's, it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer tutoring option. So if you're looking to get um, academic support in your classes from students who've previously taken that class and have at least gotten a grade of B or higher, you can go um, and sign up for a time or drop in for a tutoring session and either receive one-on-one -on -one tutoring or group tutoring, depending on um, schedules and availability. Also in the ACE Center, you can um, take advantage of some of our modified study areas. So if you're looking, if you like to study in the dark and don't like a lot of light, we have a dark room. Um, if you like to move around a lot, we have a kinesthetic room where you can sit on a huge ball and bounce around while you study. Um, so there's different modified study areas too if you want to utilize though, those in the ACE Center as well. Um, TRIO Support Services is located in Ceres Hall, which is close to the Memorial Union. Um, they, the staff in TRIO support students um, who come from low-income background, if they're first generation, or if they have um, an apparent or non-apparent disability. So you can utilize TRIO for personal or academic counseling, and they also offer career mentoring and tutoring, similar to what Caitlin was talking about with the career center. So TRIO works in tandem in a lot of ways with other departments, such as career services um, or disability services on campus. And then lastly, the Center for Writers um, is located in our library as well. If you're looking for help writing a paper or formulating a paper, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one sessions with either staff or graduate students in the Center for Writers, and they will help you craft, whether it's your first paper or your 20th paper, um, they're always willing to help you um, strengthen your paper and make sure that you're staying on task, staying on subject, and that it kind of flows nicely as well. And then lastly, um, there's several other supports, I guess. So I'm gonna refer you back to the ndsu.edu slash discover page if you, wanna, if you wanna listen to some videos on um, additional resources on campus. Thanks so much, Simkis. So Michelle, you're a senior. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your experiences with your NDSU professors and just you know, their willingness to help if you are struggling in their classes? Yeah, so all of my professors have been extremely helpful, especially with engineering. There's been quite a few hard classes that I've had to take. Um, and so all the professors are required to have office hours on campus. So if you ever need to meet with any of them to go over tests, quizzes, homework, you can go in and get that extra help you need. A lot of my professors too have done a great job um, during our like at stay at home order and stuff um, of answering emails and questions I have about assignments or scheduling Zoom calls if I don't quite understand something and I need them to go more in depth with me. So it's just a great resource to have because sometimes you really just want to talk to the person who's teaching you about stuff and hear the answer directly from them. So again, they've all been extremely helpful. Okay, thanks so much, Michelle. Um, can anyone talk a little bit about research? And I'm not sure if any of you are involved in research as undergrads. I know a lot of our undergraduates are, um, but how does that work? Um, is it a good opportunity? Does anyone want to take that question? No one? I, Caitlin? We can talk a little bit about it. Yeah, go ahead. So I've never done research personally, but I do have some friends that have been involved in research. For example, I know um, one of my friends was doing a little bit of research with pancreatic cancer. I know somebody who was researching grasslands and maintaining those. We were looking at spiderweb silk and its effects on healing and band-aids. Um, so research is definitely a great way to get involved. It's a great way to start filling your resume with real life experiences. Um, research is available for students to participate in. To get involved in that, oftentimes you'll receive um, emails looking for participants. You can talk to your professors, fellow students, the Crew and Advising Center, and they'll definitely be able to get you involved in that. It's definitely a great, great way to start kind of exploring either in your major or if there is something in another um, field that you are interested in, you can still participate in that. So a great way to start looking at those interests. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, another question, I guess, for the field, 
Are any of you involved in the honors program or have any of you participated in that? You can give me a nod or a no. <laughs> well, I, I did for the first semester. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I just didn't have time for it anymore. It is nice though, um, because it does work in like tandem with a lot of other different majors. Um, so I think it is one honors class per semester that you're required to take, but they have a variety of different ones. And it's nice because they double cover stuff. So like if you need a social science um, general education requirement, you can take it in the honors department and it'll count for your general ed requirements too. So it's not like you're taking a huge amount more, but it's cool because they're discussion-based class. So instead of just listening to professor lecture the whole time, you get to talk with some of your peers and like get more in depth, get more involved with some of the stuff you're learning about. Thanks, Michelle. Um, Sinkees, is there anything you wanna add just in general about the honors program? Um, no, Michelle kind of touched on the, the overall aspects of the program. I'll reiterate the flexibility in that program and that you do typically take one to two classes a semester as it fits in with your schedule. The coordinator of the University of Honors program is in, incredibly flexible. And so if you needed to take a break or if you're having trouble fitting it in with your um, major classes, um, you can certainly shuffle stuff around. But when you finish the program, you finish with a minor. Um, you do receive some recognition at the time you graduate. So there are some perks to it at the time of graduation, but it really is a way, it's a nice way to connect with students in other majors um, because it is disciplinary. And like Michelle said, you get to take fun classes. Like I know as of recent, they've done like a drone photography class. So even if you're not a photography or art major, you can still get to learn about drones, which is a pretty hot topic right now. So that's just one example of some of the cool classes, but I think every year they try to um, offer something a little bit more edgy or more, I guess, um, more current based on current events. Yeah, I know like right now a big topic is living or colonizing Mars basically and just how to build a society from there. So uh, they have a lot of interesting conversations and discussions for sure. All right, so our last question, again, is for all of you. And it's, what's the one piece of advice that you would give to a high school student right now, um, whether they're maybe looking at NDSU or just for their college search in general? Michelle, do you wanna start us on this one? Yeah, so my big thing would be, if you know what you want to study, go visit and talk to the people in that specific department, because that's where you're going to be spending like 90% of your time. And so it's great to like meet the people beforehand that you're going to be working with and kind of the spaces you're going to be working in so you can get a better idea of what that's going to be like. So just really take some time and invest in your program, I guess. Caitlin? I would also suggest visiting. Um, it really helps you get an idea of what campus life is like. You can kind of interact with some of those current students, kind of figure out, um, does this feel right for me? Does it not feel right for me? But ultimately, I would say just listen to yourself and don't worry too much. I know when I was looking at colleges, um, thinking about all the, the changes that were, was going to happen, that were gonna happen, thinking about making friends. It was something I was really worried about. But once you get to college, just say hello and everything else will follow. Austin? Um, so for advice, I'd say don't stress out. I know um, looking for college is a super stressful time. Like you're deciding what you wanna do with the rest of your life, but that's okay because even if you're undecided, you can come to college undecided and take gen ed courses in your first like first or second year and get those out of the way. You'll still be receiving credit, but you haven't technically declared a major yet. So you still have more, even more time than you do right now to officially decide what you want to major in as well as, um, uh, yeah, just don't stress out. And, um, college is a really fun time though. You'll really enjoy it. All right, Sophie. 
Um, I echo everything that the other students just said. I think the best advice I ever heard um, when it comes to like deciding what kind of major you want to be is if you have the chance to like meet with people who are doing that, like students, like other peers that are doing that, like see if you like hanging out with them too. Like if you like the people that are doing the same thing that you might be doing, it probably is right for you too. So yeah. All right. Thanks everyone. Sinkees, do you want to add something? You know me, I can always add a touch of advice. <laughs> um, I guess from, an, from a general college search process, my two biggest pieces of advice would be narrow down your colleges of interest to maybe three to five if you can. Do research online, visit whenever you are able to actually visit campuses. But once you narrow down that list, I would apply to all those colleges and follow all the deadlines for all those colleges as if you were planning to attend that school so that you're not missing out on any opportunities down the road once you actually make a final decision. Um, so just pretend as if you're committed to those schools until you're ready to decide so you don't miss out. And then the last thing is just no question is a dumb question and that's why folks like us are here, our students, um, our admission staff, we want to make this as simple and as less stressful as we possibly can. So whatever you need, just know we're committed to your success, whether it be NDSU, whether it be another college, um, this is what we are here to do is to help you. So never hesitate to reach out. Thanks so much, Sankees. I would definitely echo that. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I know as, I mean, myself as a first generation college student, I didn't even know how to spell FAFSA like when I was a senior in high school. So, you know, if there's something that just you think it's like, oh, this should be so obvious. Why would I even ask? Um, we've probably heard it before and it's probably a better question than you think. So, yeah, don't be afraid to ask those questions. But that's I think all we have for today. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us with this panel. Thank you to all of our panelists, of course. Um, we hope that you know you enjoyed getting to know us to know ndsu a little bit more and again we really appreciate you being here so hopefully we see you at ndsu sometime in the future and as always you know go bison <laughs>